Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. It is Tuesday, the 8th of June. We only have three days left until the Euros kicks off. I, for one, can't wait. We've got plenty of information for you today, not least some more transfer rumours. So let's get into the video. But before we do that, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell and enjoy it. So guys, we're going to start first of all with some big information for me. Ilian Melier and this prospective move to PSG. This seems pretty new to me. I don't know if I've been living under a rock, but I've seen an interview he did back in his hometown of France and his agent spoken about it. This proposed move or link to PSG. I've not seen anything about it. I'm not concerned about him moving in the near future, but it's something that we need to be aware of. It's clear there's interest there. Um, I'll run through some of the particulars of the interview. He spoke about Olympics, him potentially going to the Olympics with France, which would mean he would be late back for Leeds in the Premier League season. So there's a little bit on that as well. Um, and just I was quite surprised. Like, look, I think the thing is with Leeds United, and I keep saying it, is that Rad Razani um, and the club have come out and said they need to follow that Leicester model. We've spoken previously about Rafinha and these links to Liverpool, these links to Manchester United. And me as a fan, I've already come out and said it's not happening this summer, but it could happen next. It, it really could. Now, with Melia, I'm thinking a few more seasons down the line yet, but I'm under no illusion you know, I look at the Leeds United squad and who are the big players that could move on for big money in this Leicester model that we're going to follow? You know, you're looking at Calvin Phillips. You know, I don't want him to, but one day might come where if we don't get into Europe and a big club comes knocking that's playing Champions League football that can offer him crazy amounts of money. It could well happen one, one day in the future. Obviously, he'd rather be playing in Europe with Leeds United and hopefully we'll get there, but you just never know. So he's one, isn't he? Rafinha is definitely one. And then Melier. I, I don't know. I think you're hard pushed in the current climate, the current squad, to find anyone who could follow that Leicester model. You know, if we look at Leicester, they had Kante, they had Mares, for example, you know, that went and moved on. They had Harry Maguire, you know, um, whether or not you believe Maguire was worth 80 million or not. That's the kind of model that we have. So I look at the Leeds United side and I say, Rafinha, Calvin and Melier. You know, we paid 5 million for Melier. We paid 17 for Rafinha and KP came through our youth system. And just seeing that the that, that club of PSG's stature is linked to Melier and, and has obviously had conversations or at least sounded him out for a future move is, is quite surprising. Not because of his talent. It's undoubted, you know, he will go there. But I didn't think it would happen such as quick. I mean, the interview in itself was in Le Telegram, which I'm assuming his, his local paper while he was home back in France. He did this interview. He spoke about Leeds United. He said, look, it's a special club because of its history. It's a bit like Saint Etienne or Lens back home. There is an exceptional atmosphere in the stadium with great supporters who like to make noise and sing songs. He did go on to say, which I don't understand. When we were back in the game for the West Brom game, I kept shouting at him because the keepers train near where I stand in the warm-up. I just kept shouting, Lishat, Lishat, hoping to get some sort of um, response out of him. But, I, you know, I was saying to Louis, who I was with at the time, people would think I'm calling him shit. <laughs> That's my French, though, but my pronunciation on French. But, um, yeah, he, he said that. He says um, it's cra crazy atmosphere, like in Liverpool, like in Manchester. It gives you shivers, the Frenchman added. And then they spoke about PSG. Um, so towards the end of the conversation in Le Telegram, Melier was asked about transfer links to Paris Saint-Germain. He said, I cannot say anything about it, he replied, which struck a different chord with his previously open and forthcoming responses. So what they're saying is they were asking him a lot of questions and he was open about it and he was responding. But then when he was asked about PSG, he says, I can't say anything about it. His agent, uh, Yvonne Pouliguen, um, interjected on Melier's behalf and said, yes, PSG are interested but reiterated he is fully focused on representing Leeds United. Wow. 
That's a big thing. Like, I don't know if his agents may be putting that out there in the local press in a hope of getting Melier a bumper contract, which for me he deserves. Let's get him tied down for five years, give him what he's worth, because there will come a time when he maybe moves on to a top Champions League year-on-year -year club because he's that good. Let's get him tied down. Is it is it his agent with a simple ploy? You know, Melier was asked the question. He said, I cannot speak on the matter. The agent jumped in and said, yes, PSG are interested, but we are fully concentrated on Leeds United. I was like, whoa, yo, we, you know, I don't want him linked to, to PSG yet. This is too early. We want this kid for a few more seasons. So it was quite surprising to hear that. I want to know in the comments, guys, do you see Melier's ceiling as high as me? Do you believe he can go on to play for a Champions League football club year on year on year? I believe he can. Hopefully it's at Leeds United, but it's quite interesting to hear that that link with PSG. Um, they also spoke about the Olympics. So, um, and, and basically saying Melier's recent elevation to prominence in the, in the French goalkeeping conversation, we know that he got his cap first cap for the under-21s in the European tournament, and unfortunately they were knocked out by Holland. But he, he turned around and said, no, I can't play in the Olympics. Leeds are refusing. So um, basically, when the Olympics starts, it's very bad time, he said, because two days after the final, it's the Premier League again. And he said, I can't afford to be away for a month. Um, you know, during pre-season. So Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa have pulled rank and said to Melier, look, you cannot miss the start of the season. You are number one. We need you, so therefore you can't represent France in the Olympics. Which now, if they're under 23s during the Olympics, you can, you know, represent your, your national side. Um, so so that's quite interesting to hear that the club have told him, no, you, you know, you, you, you will not be uh, uh, representing France at the Olympics. But the big one is the fact that PSG are interested and his agent said as much. Now, let me know in the comments, do you think it's his agents maybe trying to get him a bumper contract? I think that might be the case because I still think it's a little bit too early for Melier to be moving to PSG. They have Kayla Navas, they can have their pick of top goalkeepers, maybe David De Gea maybe moves there. I'm not sure if indeed they are looking to move Navas on. Maybe Melier, of course, he's French. Why wouldn't he want to go play for PSG? I get that. You know, we have to remember this. We we Like Leeds United Tours is huge, right? But to some other players, it's not so much. And when they've got a chance to go play for PSG in their home country, then of course they're going to snap their hands off. I don't care what anyone says. But I think it'd be too early in his career you know, for, for that move uh, to be made for me. But a really interesting one and one to keep our eyes on. Um, next, guys, we're, we're going to talk about Mateus Pereira. I have been banging the Mateus Pereira drum forever. Like, since West Brom, even when he came up, you know, I remember in the championship, I think it was January, um, when they confirmed that deal and signed him long-term. If you remember, they only had him on loan initially. They signed him long-term. Um, and I remember back in the championship saying, this guy is unbelievable, you know. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that they have him on such a deal. It's great work by the West Brom, you know, director of football or, or however their transfer works. But obviously, they've been relegated. So if you're looking at the relegated clubs, Sheffield United, Fulham and, and West Brom, Pereira's the one. I look at Mateus Pereira and I keep thinking, like, when back, towards the back end of the season, when Tyler Roberts was playing as regularly as he was and he was missing a lot of chances and not playing key passes and keeping hold of the ball at, at, at certain times when he should have moved it on, if you were to replace him during them games with Mateus Pereira... It, it's a no-brainer for me. And that's not me having a slant on Ty Tyler Roberts. I think Tyler Roberts is still young. I think Tyler Roberts is still good. And I think, you know, Bielsa backs Tyler Roberts. And I think he'll be here for a fair few seasons yet. And he will grow into a great player. You know, he's going to get experience during the Euros with Wales, which is absolutely huge for us as a club, for him to get that exposure and get that experience. But if you had a, a player of Mateus Pereira's ilk, in order to come to Leeds United, it would be amazing. And the, the, the figures that are getting touted about is 15 million. It's not a lot of money for me. You know, obviously it's not my money. Obviously I'm not spending it. And if there's better deals to be had elsewhere, then of course go get them. And, you know, Victor ought to be doing that. But apparently Leeds have said no, which blows my mind a little bit, you know. Um, apparently his agent is trying to find him a top flight club in the Premier League. His agent is touting him about after West Brom's relegation. And the agent has specifically said, I've spoken to Leeds. 
amongst other clubs. You're probably thinking, is he maybe top two? Villa, I mean, and they've done some great business again. Buendia, apparently they're after Ward Prowse. Aston Villa have some, you know, some great people in charge when it comes to making transfers. That goes without saying they've got a great squad. Just, just big shout out them. Um, you're probably thinking Newcastle, maybe South. Just a number of clubs that he's probably been offered to. And and at present, apparently Leeds have said, look, we're not interested. We're not interested and we're not going to take you up on this offer. I don't know why that is, because if, if the agent's coming and saying, look, you can have Mateus Pereira for 15 million, if I'm Victor Orta, I'm saying, yes, please, take him. Now, there might be a number of reasons as to why. I'm not privy to these conversations, obviously. I wish I was, you know. But um, could it be end up being a bidding war if he's getting touted out left, right and centre? You know, it's clear he's going to leave West Brom and it's clear he, he wants to stay in England and he wants to, you know, play in the Premier League. Why wouldn't he, you know? But for me, for 15 million, get it done. I think he's absolutely unbelievable. He would be ideal for what we're looking for. You know, like I said, in that Tyler Roberts role, it would have been just chalk and cheese in terms of goal outputs, goal contributions, assists, etc. You know, dribbles, whatever you want. I'm not a stat man, but you just know his key metrics would be above everything that we had last season. You know, I, I I would be well on board that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If Leeds have definitely said no, it's a real shock for me. It is. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, Mateus Pereira, get it done, man. Get it done, Victor. Uh, just a couple more bits to, to finish with other than them two transfer stories. Not a massive news day, but as always, I will bring you all the latest news from Leeds, from Ellen Road and from Fort Parch. Some news on the Euros. Diego Lorente and the rest of the Spain squad have had to isolate um, during their preparation. So that's going to have a real um, big, you know, um, big, I guess, you know, it's going to hamper them massively, isn't it, when it comes to their Euros preparation. Spain could be an outside pick. My pick's still Italy. But yeah, Diego Lorente and the rest of the Spain squad have had to isolate due to a COVID scare. And just finally, Leeds fans being Leeds fans, we always take more. We're, we always win Twitter polls. And it turns out we can now influence a whole football club's player of the year um, awards. Like Ben White was nominated the Fans Player of the Year Award at the Amex. Ben White won the Player of the Year Award. Now, obviously, I've spoken to Ryan from Seagull Socials before. He's in the comments, like, saying, what? You know, they had the likes of Lewis Dunk, Basuma, um, you know, a number of top talent, Basuma. You could go Basuma, right? And none of them have won the award. It was, of course, won by Ben White. Why? Because Leeds United voted. If you actually check the ratings, guys, you'll find that Patrick Bamford and Stuart Dallas came second, and they don't even fucking play for Brighton. So it is what it is. It's amazing to see. Yesterday, you know, we had we had Bamford getting shouted do, 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 at the uh, England game when Watkins touched the ball. And now Leeds United are winning Ben White the award for the player of the season at a club that is, you know, Brighton. We... we <laughs> We always take more. We win the polls. It's amazing to see. I'm absolutely buzzing. And just on that as well, like big shout out, Ben White, Calvin Phillips, both being in the Euro squad, probably rooming together. Absolute bromance. You love to see it. Um, you know, I, I remember going on Sky Sports, man, and I said both of them would play for England. It's there, it's video footage, and they've both gone on and done that. Ben White is a Rolls Royce. He's still leads, isn't he? He's still leads, and Calvin's Calvin. Um, you know, there's been a, there's been some stuff on social media. Cashley Cole coming out and saying that he's not as good as Hedison, which is okay. I understand that, but in terms of him not being able to deliver balls like Henderson, and he's it's such a poor take. Check it out on social media. He's been absolutely hammered. Plenty of images sent to him. One specifically where he puts Patrick Bamford in when we went one 0 up against Chelsea in that first tie when Frank Lampard was in, was in charge, and that was a beautiful ball from KP in that game as well. So. You know, these pundits need to do the research before they start, you know, taking on Leeds fans on social media, as seen with the Ben White side going in winning the award. Once we get going, we're a, we're a tough nut to crack, and uh, I bet he's had to, you know, crawl back into that little hovel. Um, to be honest, players that are connected with Chelsea are not very good pundits, are they? Um, we've had a few cases. I think there is definite disdain for Leeds United because it always seems to be come from a pundit who's ex-Chelsea be it man or woman, <laughs> it is what it is. 
Um, but yeah, listen, that was your daily leads. Thank you, as always. I'm sorry for moving my hands about. I've had a few complaints. I don't really care because it's what I do. I talk with my hands. Um, I blame my mum. I blame my mum. It's just because I'm passionate. I'm passionate. Someone said, when people are boring, it's what they do. I must be boring then, but thanks for watching the video anyway. Um, before you do go, like it, subscribe to the channel, get your comments, and of course, hit that notification bell. And you'll see around here somewhere now that there's a playlist for the Euros where I preview each of the groups. If you could check them out for me as well, smash, smash a like on that, and I'll see you on Thursday. We've got a live stream on Thursday for a preview for the Euros, and of course, we'll get some watch-alongs done during the Euros. And as always, you'll get your daily leads every morning at 6am. Peace out. Leads 18.